morning, everybody. Glad to see everybody can be with us this morning. I know some's had surgery and we've had passings and stuff like that, but it's great to see us all gather together, fellowship with one another. My title for my lesson this morning is What is Your Purpose? I got some questions here that you have to answer on your own. What is the meaning of life? Why do we exist? Is it just to have children for another generation to carry on the meaningless existence? What is your purpose in life? God never created anything without a purpose. Every plant, every creature on earth has a purpose. You know, God has a purpose for everyone, for every person has been born. If your heart is beating, God has a purpose for you. Knowing that why you exist and why your purpose in life is important to know. If you want to know your purpose, you have to start with God. Because he did not create your, you, you did not create yourself, or nor determine the reason for your existence. The world tells us to look. The world tells us to look within ourselves for our purpose. But neither we nor any man has that answer. You know, Dr. Couches are full of people who are seeking the meaning of life. Jails are full of people who are confused about their purpose in life. Since we do not create ourselves, we cannot determine the true purpose of our lives or what we are supposed to do without God because, he, because only He can tell us why He made us. In the lesson, I hope you will ask yourself, what is my purpose? Our reading this morning will come from Ephesians. Ephesians 1 and 11 and 12. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the conceal of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trust in Jesus. Also turn with me to Colossians 1 and 16. For by Him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or perpetrators or power. All things are created by Him and for Him. I hope everybody follows along with some of these words I cannot pronounce. Now it is an honor and privilege to go up and have a <coughs> You know, the verses that we have read teach us that God created everything. He has, he has a purpose for all of us. We must choose whether we want to take salvation or not. We must choose whether we will fulfill our purpose in life because God has given us all free will. One thing we must never forget is without God, we would not even exist. Let's turn over to Revelations chapter 4, verse 11. <coughs> the 
Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. We should always know that God loves His creation, even though we disappoint Him at times. You know, as parents, we understand this because we love our children no matter what they do. When they break our heart or they break something precious or they turn wicked, we will be, you know, we are very disappointed in them. And when we, when we disappointed, you know, sometimes it's what we call, as parents call, tough, tough love. We give them the tough love. We still love them, but we do. God's the same way with us. He gives us the tough love. God loves every person. He even loves the ones that do these horrible things. <coughs> the men get to choose their path. And, you know, some, you, you see out in this world that God, a lot of men have turned their back on God. And, their, and the way they turn in their actions causes them to not make it to heaven. But God still loves their soul. You know, everybody's special in the sight of God. And he and God He chose to create us in His own image. Let's turn over to Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having repented us, us, us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasures of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us except in the love and in the beloved. Think about it. Before God laid the foundation of the earth, He had you in mind. What a comfortable thought. Comforting thought. He had a plan for you and me before He created the world. You know, it's hard for us to, or difficult for us to understand this, but God knows all about us. He knew before we were even born and what we could potentially do if we choose the right path. For example, let's notice what God tells Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Three, four, and five. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. He knew us before we was even born. Knowing that God loves us and in our and is our creator. Bringing us our first purpose in life, which is to establish a eternal relationship with God. God created man to be His companionship, and if, as you study in the Bible, at the, in Genesis, we have been given an eternal soul, but our physical body only lasts us 
a few short years. During those few short years, we have the decision and decision to make for, for eternity destination or not. So our life on the earth is our testing grounds for eternity. Life on earth is very short compared to eternity. It is our own opportunity to prepare for eternity. And it, and it is being and it is us wanting to know or wanting to know our Creator and to love Him because He first loved us. God wants us to be part of His family. So we must choose to do so. Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse Second Corinthians chapter 5, 18 through 21. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not put in putting their trespasses to them, and hath committed unto us the word of the reconciled nation. Now when we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ, instead be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Even though God knew that we were sinful, He allowed His Son to die on the cross for us. I wish more people would really let this sink in in what God had did, did for us. You know, he didn't, Jesus didn't even deserve what He had done, but He did it because He loved us. I believe that if more people believed and understood what God did for us, that there would be many more Christians in this whole world right now. What a blessing it would be to allow to be part of the family of God. His family is a spiritual family that will will last for eternity. Where we'll get to live with God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In order for us to be fulfilling our purpose of knowing God and loving Him, we must allow ourselves to become part of His spiritual family. The way we do this is by obeying the Gospel and being born again. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. First Peter chapter one verse twenty two and twenty three through twenty three. Seeing ye have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit and to unfailing love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. You know, God wants us to read and study His Word and to learn about Him 
and his plans for us. You know, when we go with God's Word and obey it, we see it, see that it will cause us to be born again as a child of God. You know, there's me in this world that they don't believe. Or, or go by by what other people will tell them, but they don't go and study what the people will tell them or go through the book and, and write down the scriptures and study it, and they just go by one verse and not the other. Many of this knows us. I know. They say, well, it's kind of had a. Uh, conversations with people that believe a different way and they get mad and they fuss and burn and turn and quit talking to you because they don't want to hear the truth. Well, let's turn to John chapter 3, verses 3 and 7, where we find where Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. <clears throat> And a lot of them that don't believe that you were baptized, that you just have to say a prayer. They won't study this, but you can find here before the Passover and before Christ was crucified on the cross and everything, how he said you would have to be baptized to make it to heaven. John chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. Yeah, where Nicodemus asked Christ about being able to go. But, uh, chapter, uh, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot seek the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb? and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That in which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, he must be born again. In order to become a part of the family of God, we must choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, repent, confess Jesus as our Lord, and be baptized in water. Paul tells us that baptism is our death. And when we are brought back up out of the water, we become, a child, become children of God. We must put away our old self because we have been born again. And so notice what the scriptures that show this reference of baptism in Romans chapter 6 verses 3 through 8. Romans chapter 6 3 through 8. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like a, as Christ was risen up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also would walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that thenceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. When we choose to be baptized in the name of Jesus with our faith in, the working, in working for God, our old self dies in the water, watery grave, and we are born again. We become a new creature. 
Christ in his, Christ in our clothes, clothes of righteousness of Christ. God no longer sees our past sins. Whatever we have done, it's been washed away, forgotten. By obeying the gospel, this is the beginning point of us fulfilling our purpose in life. Our second purpose in life as Christians is to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord so that we can become more like our Savior. Let's go to John chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. John chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. Jesus Christ speaking. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. There is no great honor in life, in this life, than to be like Him who saved us. It's a daily work. It's a daily thing to strive as to be like Christ-like. You know, the only way you can do this is by studying God's Word, seeing what we are supposed to do. You know, none of us can come or become Christ-like overnight. It takes time as we study the importance in, in growing every day and to become more like Christ. You know, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16, Christ speaking here, Ye are the light of the world, a city that it is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Our purpose in life is to shine the light of Christ. Our attitude and our actions make a lot of difference in our lives and how the people sees us. We need to be the lights to this world. You know, there's many areas that I can grow on to make my life a little shinier for, for God. But the more I study, the more I turn my, I believe my life. The way I, I treat people, the way the Bible tells me to, my light shines just a little brighter. I hope people see that. <laughs> you know, there are too many areas to name in one lesson. One of my favorite chapters. That sums up that we are to do once we become Christian. It's found in Colossians chapter 3. There are a lot of details in this short chapter. But all I can do is read this chapter to you. I want you to pay close attention to what it says we are to do as Christians. Because this little chapter tells us a lot about our purpose in life as we strive to be like Christ and to live by the Word of God. In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, all 25 verses. 
if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above every, 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 Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your afflictions on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and you are alive, is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortified, therefore, your memories which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, adult, the ordinance, affliction, evil compassion, and conversation, which is idler. Hope, hope people will follow along because these words are hard for me to pronounce. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk some times when ye live in them. But know ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malices, blasphemy, filthy, conversations out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Rabbinus and sickness, bond nor free, but Christ is all, is all in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, boldness, of mercy, kindness, humbleness, of kind meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man hath a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be the, let the world of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching it and uh, abolishing one another in songs and hymns, and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart for the Lord. In whatsoever ye do in the word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Why submit yourself unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husband, love your wives, and be ye not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents. In all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Father, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye servants or men pleasures, but in the singleness of the heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye receive the reward of inheritance, for the ser we serve the Lord Christ. But he that doth wrong shall receive from the wrong which hath done, and there is no respect of a person. <clears throat> I hope you will take a good look at this chapter and break it down. And grow as Christian. I know I could easily make ten lessons out of this one chapter. It covers everything in general from what we are <coughs> to do in our personal lives, how we treat the others, how we are able to how we are to be in our own marriages. There is no other 
such there is so much for us to learn our lives will be filled with purpose and meaning if we simply open our eyes that we teach us about our lives and about living life You know, one great purpose in life of a Christian is found in Ephesians chapter 10, uh, chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath there before ordained that we should walk in them. One of our works is are to walk in serving others. Jesus, you know, Jesus set this example for us as we study in our Bibles. And we, and let's turn to Matthew chapter 20, verses 27-28, Jesus speaking. And whatsoever will the, be the chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered un, unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Since we are not above our Master, we must see that we all should also serve others as well. Why? This in, can include many things. What I mentioned in one way is we can serve all mankind. We can t teach them about Christ and the importance of following him after Him. Turn with me to Matthew 28, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19. Matthew 28, verses 19 20, Jesus speaking. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, always even unto the end of the world. Amen. For those who have chosen to embrace their purposes in life by living for God, have been God has blessed you with all measures that we deserve. We have been given something that we should not want or hide or keep ourselves. Even though we know that Jesus said there will be only a few that accept the wonderful the wonderful news of the gospel, we must do our part in giving those in the world the opportunity to hear that we have already accepted and made it part of our lives. We know that God loves the world. And wants everyone to repent and turn to him. Let's turn to Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be 
saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Also turning with the second Peter three and nine. Second Peter chapter three verse nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not will willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Since we know that this is God's desire, we should be our desire in our purpose in life. If we knew the knowledge how to cure cancer, we we would not remain quiet, would we? We would know we would tell everybody that, you know, hey, we got cancer. We can treat it and there wouldn't be all this death from cancer. But we should be the same way with God's Word. We should be out there telling and teaching what it says. You know, it's a matter of simply making a matter of making the choice and embracing the purpose that God has made for you. Doing so will doing this will enrich your life and make it where you can help others and help guide them to the truth about their purpose in life and why they exist. If we look into the Bible, I hope you have discovered the clear picture that God, that God has created everyone. The, the question becomes, are you fulfilling your purpose in life? Are you doing what God created you to do? Are you enjoying the life He gave you? Are you living a life of service or just believing doctrine and just attending the services? Your life and my life will only be meaningful and fulfilled when we are doing what God created us to do. I hope all of us will embrace our purpose in life and what God has spelled out in His Word clearly for it, clearly to us what we are supposed to do. This is my end of my lesson. I hope I brought something forth that will help us to grow. Or something that we had stuck in our mind and brought it back forward to help us. But I don't like to end the service the lesson without the opportunity. If anyone here would like to be be saved, the steps we must take, you must hear the word. You must have faith. You must confess. I mean, we must repent, then, must, then confess, then be baptized. If anyone would like to take these steps, or anyone needs a prayer to the church, for any reason, come forward as it's a song that has been selected. Uh, like I said, I hope people follow along because some of these words, it's hard for me to get my tongue to say these words and twist it to say it. <laughs> but in Christian life, even as we work for the Lord, you will be persecuted, you'll be put down, you'll be shunned. But God, as long as we do that, we have a clear conscience that we're doing the work for God. Thank you.